We're talking about this fucking guy again. Death Noodles. We all know this guy, right? He's getting up to a lot. How long do we give him? Until he kills himself, I mean. Because it's gonna happen, it's just it's just a matter of when. So Dennis had his first roast battle and it was... You just met my parents! <laughs> yeah, this place messier than your mom's pussy. <laughs> You'd know you probably ate it. I'm gonna fuck your mother in the ass and then I'm gonna chop her fucking head off. Yeah, it was bad. I, d I don't know what else to say. The, ch the entire chat was Among Us dicks. This guy's dick is apparently bigger than his ass. This woman is insufferable. He made a video afterwards with his top guys justifying how this event was a huge success. And people were laughing. I saw the back of niggas' tonsils. You know what I mean? Yeah, I said, yeah, Even a shorty <laughs> trolling. Food in her mouth when she got called, uh, what was it? What was it? Rebecca? Rebecca, Rebecca Black. Black. I called her Ricky Lake. Black. Yeah. 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 Credit, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, no. Alright, you get all that? So one of the YouTubers Dennis called out actually did decided to go to the second event. His name is Salvo Pancakes. He was on all the promotion for the event, albeit he was listed under the title Keemstar's Employee. Clearly Dennis did not anticipate anyone actually showing up as the resulting event was quite literally a nightmare. It's probably up there with TanaCon for worst YouTube events. So Salvo goes on stage, Dennis blasts out the back room, pushing him in the back, sending him off stage, and then hiding behind security. People were saying that I was hiding behind security. I... I was trying to essentially get back. I apologize, Dennis. You weren't hiding from Salvo. You were running away. This wasn't an assault. It was good old-fashioned slapstick humor in the same vein as the JFK assassination. So Salvo eventually is allowed on stage and is given a mic for around 30 seconds before Dennis kicks him out and everyone cheers. Oh my God! Yeah. There's a bunch more stuff that happened, but you probably already know because I'm two weeks late to the story. There's actually quite a bit of violence. <laughs> this woman uh, who threw water on Salvo was apparently attacking Jessica Pizzle outside the venue. Skid Row Steven literally admits that he was trying to attack Salvo, and Corey, or fat black guy to give him his proper title, was also attacking people outside the venue. Dennis claims that Corey didn't attack anyone, and the guy that Corey didn't attack was harassing people. Here's the proof. Right. If anyone understands Spanish, please tell me what they're saying. Dennis at one of his other events had his opening joke recorded, and this has now spurred him to not allow phones in the venue. My building, my place, my rules. If you go to any future shows, your phones will be taken from you, presumably with force. Apparently he doesn't want anyone stealing his jokes. Going to one of these shows to steal jokes is like stealing from a modern art museum. It's a fairly high stakes mission, but at the end of the day you've come home with a pineapple and a box of cat shit. On the bright side though, unlike the first event, Dennis did not get banned on Twitch over the second event. This came afterwards when he had a stripper get her tits out on camera. Man down! Man down! I don't mean to correct my co-host Steven right there folks but I think it's actually man up oh, Jesus Christ it's not just on YouTube like I do see a very commercial like you being able to make it in television television literal me no the trolls could never bear to hear it I like how he doesn't use any of these lines on the day when he's with the psychic how much time did he need to come up with these I mean he's obviously trying to frame it in a very salacious way to make me look bad I don't know if I'd describe that as salacious of all the words that could be used <laughs> salacious so wouldn't slightly. be the one the fact that you're describing it as salacious is very telling. How sexual was this experience for you, Dennis? Were you man up or were you man getting there? After the event, he fled to Las Vegas and was selling tickets for a fake event that doesn't exist. Augie called into the venue and confirmed that Dennis wasn't booked. So the question is, where the fuck did all the money go? After this happened, Dennis deleted every single post promoting the event. Uh, then he claimed that the venue got 300 calls telling them to drop Dennis, which is just a blatant lie. So according to Dennis, after the roast battle, he was approached by a man he doesn't know. And the guy told him, I have a spot for you on a comedy show in Las Vegas that's happening in five hours. So Dennis traveled with this stranger to Las Vegas and the guy told him to promote this event, right? And Dennis just did it. He didn't even question it. And then the guy goes, oh no, the trolls. They kicked you out and oh no, my promoter just dropped me. Oh no. And then this obvious con man manages to bait Dennis into buying him food, drinks, and taking him to an aquarium, paying for a helicopter ride. Sounds like you treat this con man to a great night in Las Vegas, Dennis. Sounds like he had a wonderful time. Then the con man tells Dennis, wait, I have a great idea. 
there's another club that you can perform in. So they drive there, and the guy says, I'm going to go in and, put, and tell them to put you on, uh, but you're not allowed to come in and watch me do it. So he locks Dennis in his car and goes inside and comes back out five minutes later. Oh, no, the trolls! They got here as well! Turns out you're blacklisted from the entirety of Las Vegas. And that's uh, Def Noodle's full story. Carvos challenged him to a boxing match, and Def Noodle's pussed out, said he'd only do it if it was on the streets, no rules. He's been posting these pictures to Twitter claiming that he's 190 pounds. Where's all that weight, bro, <laughs> in your head? We all knew you were thick-headed, but 190 pounds, that is crazy. And apparently he cut down from 200 pounds. He scooped out a portion of his brain mat and just fucking threw it in the trash. But I have a punching bag. I mean, I, I even hurt my wrist from how hard I punched the bag. Why do you say that like it's a brag? You broke your own fucking wrist punching a heavy bag? I'm starting to see why you didn't want to fight Carlos. Both have to go and train and do all this shit. I already train. I already, uh, you know, exercise and, and do all this shit daily. Like, it's not going to change much of my routine. I love the completely unearned arrogance. He unironically thinks he could compete. He actually thinks he could compete for a world title. Whoever he fights is going to fucking kill him. There is no way he's going to do enough training to actually be able to fight anyone. He is going to get destroyed. I feel like we're starting to peel away the layers of Dennis's mind. We're starting to gain a level of insight. He owns a heavy bag. He's a professional boxer. He goes to the gym an hour a day. He's an athlete. He does a 15-minute set in a New York comedy club. He's a professional comedian. For a guy who's been in comedy for 20 years, he seemingly has not gotten any better from when he started. It's because he has an inflated sense of ego. In Dennis's mind, he can't improve because he's already the best. His ex-employee Tiana released a series of DMs between presumably herself and Def Noodles. I say presumably because no name was ever given. The only evidence that it's him is him coming out and claiming that it was all slander. The DMs are about Dennis taking out a burning man with zero preparation, refusing to buy food or water, making a sleep in his car that he made her pay for. Uh, but he drove that car to the Burning Man. Can't let a woman drive. He also did not have a license when he did. Apparently, he makes all his employees sign an NDA when they join his workforce. So you can only imagine what sick activities go down in the Deaf Noodles office. She claims that Dennis is suing her for slander because he sent her a DM saying that he'd activated his lawyers, who, based on the DMs, are animatronic. I'll say that there is no way he's actually suing her. That being said, I do have a history of being incorrect in regards to Deaf Noodles' legal decisions. Considering that she never even referred to him by name, it seems like he's just setting himself up for for another lost lawsuit, putting him one step closer to complete bankruptcy. It's gonna be a cold, cold winter for Def Noodles. In other lawsuit news, there was a dismissal in the Keemstar Def Noodles case, because I'm sure Def Noodles is kicking himself over this. The defamatory statement made by Keemstar was not directed at Dennis Feitoza. It was directed at the fictional character of Def Noodles. Ain't that fucking rich? The character that he made up to shield himself from internet criticism is now fucking him over in his court case. Ain't that fucking classic? That is poetic irony. Some YouTube videos on Dennis are apparently getting flagged down by his audience. Uh, mine did not get flagged though. You know why? Because I have Susan Wojcicki's children. In all of his videos, he's playing the victim, claiming that people are making up fake stories about him. The fucking irony, eh, Dennis? The guy who spent his entire career making up fake stories about people he doesn't like is now crying about having fake stories made up on him. You can see why no one feels sorry for you, right, Dennis? That being said, this whole downward spiral, this mental decay, probably the funniest thing you've ever done, intentionally or otherwise. And in that sense, Dennis, you can be proud. You've made me proud. Your greatest enemy. You've made me proud, son.